Welcome. In a ninth grade, tenth grade geometry class, we often give kids formulas for volumes of, of surface areas of cones and spheres and all sorts of stuff. And these volumes, these formulas just come out of the blue. Um, often they're told that you can't prove this formula, it requires calculus. Therefore, just believe it for now and plug in numbers and just solve these problems. I don't find that very satisfying. I'd like to explain to kids where formulas come from. And yes, it does require calculus to get things done properly. But what I'd like to do in this video is give a really good convincing um, argument of why the volume of a cone is one third of the volume of the cylinder in which it sits. So let me just briefly talk about cylinders for a moment and then we'll talk about cones next. So here's a cylinder. All a cylinder is is some shape in some uh, plane, there's a crazy shape, with a congruent copy of that shape drawn down below in another plane. So here it is. I don't know if you can see what I'm drawing. So there is a cylinder kind of crazy, but it has some weird base and a congruent base at the top. Now just to get a theory of volume going, most people like to declare that the volume of a cylinder is simply the area of the base, area of the base times its height. So the height would be just however tall this thing is, h, something like that. Okay, fair enough, that might seem intuitively plausible. Um, it really comes from actually looking at boxes where we really believe that formula. For example, here's a rectangular box. Suppose I tell you it's uh, A inches wide, B inches deep, and C inches high. Most people say the volume of a box wants to be A, B, C, but what's this A times B? A times B is really the area of the base, and then I went times C, which is the height. So actually this volume here of a, of a box, which we're very familiar with and really like to believe, is this formula over yonder. So the volume of the cylinder is just generalize what we like to believe about boxes. Okay, great. But what I really want to get to here is if now I imagine I had a cone, so I choose some cone point up here, and instead of making a cylinder with that base, I now made a wacky cone with that base. Maybe this is not a very good picture here, but it's you know some sort of circus tent construction with a floor given by that shape. Apparently, the volume of this cone is actually taking up one third of the space, it's one third of the volume of the cylinder. And that's Kind of surprising, exactly one third. No matter what shape the base you have, it's always one third the shape of the of the uh, the volume of the cylinder surrounding it. That's the formula I'd like to explain. All right, now to do that, I need to appeal to some intuition that seems believable, and it's basically what's called Cavalieri's principle. But let me explain it as follows. So here goes. Imagine again, I've got a cone. And suppose it's an unusual base, but it won't be quite as wacky this time. Okay, there's a cone with some unusual base. And the nice thing about this cone is we're going to measure it's like a stack of papers. At each level, I've got another stack, which is just a scaled copy of that particular base, all the way up to the top, where I guess the very top piece of paper is basically equivalent to a point. So there's a stack of papers, of a certain height, with a strange shape. If over yonder, I can choose a really nice cone. I'll make it a triangular cone. And most teachers will tell me off right now because triangular cones shouldn't be called cones, they should be called pyramids, but it's really the same construct. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna assume it's, it too is a stack of paper. And I've arranged it so the base of this, you know, the bottom piece of paper of this cone is the same area as this bottom of the piece of paper of the cone on the left. And since everything is scaled versions thereafter, the area of a slice of paper at one height is gonna equal, you know, this area A here will equal the area of this cone over at this um, slice at this level here. So if each piece of paper at each height has the same area, then it seems completely believable that this entire stack of paper has the same volume as this entire stack of paper. In fact, it's even true for the cylinders around it. Do, 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 do. If I think of those as stacks of paper this time, at each height the areas are exactly the same of, the, of each piece of paper. Then, uh, whoops, <laughs> then I'd like to believe that uh, the volumes of those two cylinders are going to be the same as well because basically as layers of paper, nothing's changed. Each paper at each height has the same area, therefore the stack of paper in the end is going to be the same. So, if I like to prove that this wacky cone, which I'm now outlining in green, is one third the area of the cylinder in which it sits, since I've just translated the problem to the same numbers but made it nicer for myself, if this cone is the same area as the cone on the left, sitting in a cylinder the same volume as the cylinder on the left, then Proving um, the volume of a cone is one third the volume of a cylinder would be equivalent to doing it for a nice particular cone and a nice cylinder. So what I'm going to do then is prove here the volume of this cone is one third the volume of the cylinder. Prove it for triangular cones means I've proved it 
for general cones. So, so I've matched the volume of the cones match, the bottoms of the cylinders match. All right, now, whew, that was hard. That was probably fast too. Sorry about that. Maybe want to replace play this video a couple of times. So we now reduce the problem to that of triangular cones, that is, triangular pyramids. Now, I need a very complicated picture, which I'm not very good at drawing, so I pre-drew it. Here is a triangular cone. In fact, here are three triangular cones, Roman numeral 1, Roman numeral 2, Roman numeral 3, and I've arranged them so they can stack together to make a nice triangular cylinder. I claim, if we look at these three cones, um, I can prove all sorts of good things about it. So here's a look at cone number one. It has base B. Here's base B, do, 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 do it in green dots, and here's its height. Over in the stacked picture, here's its base, and here's its height. If you look at cone two, it has the same base B, and actually here's its height there, which is exactly the same height. So here's its base, here's its height. So there we are, cones one and three have the same base and the same height. They really are going to be, you know, thinking in terms of stacks of paper, it means all the papers are the same all the way through, they're going to have the equal volumes. So that shows me that volume one equals volume three. But if I look at this picture again another way, look at cones numbers one and two. Cone two has this base A, cone one has this base A. Here they are, here's base A for cone two, here's base A for cone one. And in this picture, it's clear they have the same height, whatever that height is. So that means those cones 1 and 2, again, have the same base, same height, which means all the stacks of papers are going to be matching up perfectly, so they're going to have to the same volume. So I can now conclude that volume 2 equals volume 1. Well, 1 equals 2, 2 equals 3. Therefore, I can now conclude that volume 1 equals volume 2 equals volume 3. That has got three equal volumes. These three cones on the left have equal volume and they stack together to make a beautiful cylinder. So now look at cone number one. It is a cone in a cylinder. There it is. And we just proved it is one of three equal parts of that cylinder. That is, the volume of this cone, volume one, must be one third of the volume of the cylinder. So that shows that the volume of a triangular cone, and in fact I chose a very nice triangular cone, I made sure all my bits of paper were right triangles this time, is actually one third of the cylinder in which it, contained, in which it is contained. That does it. Whew. Very tricky proof, a lot of work. Um, if you like a challenge, here goes, I'll give, it, give you a challenge and I'll just leave it at that. We prove that the volume of a cylinder is area of the base times the height. We've got the volume of the cone is one third area of the base times the height. There's something in between the volume of a question mark, which is one half the base times the height. Not many people see this. I'll show you what it is. It's a conoid type of thing. So here's some crazy base. So a cylinder has a complete copy of the top. A cone has a point for a top. So there's the cylinder, there's the cone. I need something that's halfway between being the whole shape on the top and a point on the top. And that's going to be a line segment. I claim if you somehow could make this shape, I don't know if you see what I'm trying to draw. It's sort of like a pinched shape, but it's pinched along a line at the top here. I claim the volume of this guy is one half the base times the height. So my challenge to you is to prove that. Thank you.